In the previous video, we looked at um, some informal but very good systems on which tell us how much to order um, for some items. Uh, we order um, very little quantity. We are okay with frequent ordering and the cost associated with frequent ordering. Um, and for some other items, we order in a bulk, um, um, huge batch together so that we can save on frequent ordering, save on transportation cost. In this video, I'm going to take you through some formal systems to get that done. So there are three systems for deciding how much to order. One is lot for lot, where I order what I need. Second is lot size based, where I would order in a fixed quantity. The fixed quantity could be a truckload, could be a container load, it could be some minimum order quantity or MOQ as it is called, which is um, 100 units, 500 units, or it could be some optimization based uh, quantity where I have um, created some math and use that to say that, hey, if I order this much, my total cost are minimized, which could be, we call it economic order quantity, economic batch quantity, or economic batch quantity with shortage, and there are many other such methods. Now the lot for lot method um, are generally used for expensive or high inventory cost items because now my control cost is going to be higher for these items. But because those items have higher holding cost or higher obsolescence cost, I am okay with ordering more frequently um, because I need that flexibility I and the inventory could be very dangerous or very expensive for me. Lot size is another case where I say the products or holding costs may not be that expensive. So I order a larger batch so that I can save on procurement um, professionals cost um, and uh, I can save on transportation cost. Versus EBQ or EOQ, I take an optimized approach and say that, you know, that both these costs vary differently. So I arrive at some value which which the sum of those costs are minimized. So for when to order, um, we have two systems. Reorder point systems, uh, you might recognize the graph there. The y-axis gives us inventory, x-axis gives us time. So the first thing we do is fix up a reorder point. So now assume we are in a perfect world and I am three days away from my supplier. So the moment I order, my supplier is going to send the goods to me in three days. Well, in that scenario, um, what I do is, let's suppose my daily usage is 10 units and I'm in a perfect world. I will put the reorder point at 30 units. So whenever I'm in 30 units, I reorder. And then when I get to zero, precisely at that time, this new quantity would arrive from the suppliers and my inventory would again go up. Now we are not in a perfect world. So we need to add some safety stock. So demand during lead time plus safety stock, that's what my reorder point is. And whenever I reach my reorder point, I place an order again and the story continues. The other system that we have is called periodic systems. Now periodic systems don't have as high frequent control as the reorder point. In the reorder point, I have to keep checking if the goods have reached the reorder point, I have to consistently monitor it. In periodic, I don't do that. I fix a period, alternate days, one week, one month, one quarter, something. And then what I do is I review the inventory at every quarter or every period. And I have a um, decided target level and, when, and I order inventory so that it reaches that target level. So the target level here is um, whatever is needed uh, to su be sufficient till the next review period. So again, let's go to back to our perfect world. Let's assume my order goods once every week. And uh, if I order goods once every week and the way it works is as soon as I order, the supplier takes uh, three days to supply the item. So I'm reviewing once every seven days. And um, after I order, I get the items in three more days. So what happens is, um, let's suppose I order to get my material today. I'm going to get next material after 10 days because I'm going to review after seven days and the supplier sends it to me after three days. So I'm going to get the next material after 10 days. So today I need to have the enough material to last me for at least 10 days. So lead time, demand during lead time, which is three days, demand during review period in this example is seven days. So that makes it 10 days. And we are not in a perfect world, so we need safety stock. That's the review period. And the way it works is as and when the inventory reduces, I check on the review period date and whatever is the requirement um, I, I or to reach the maximum target level, I order that much. And um, yeah, that's how I keep working continuously. 
So now you see in this system, well, yeah, we may carry higher inventory sometimes, but the idea is I'm not monitoring the inventory real time. I'm only looking at the inventory once every period, right? A week, 15 days, a quarter. So uh, the monitoring of inventory cost reduces. The number of orders I place reduces. So if they're relatively inexpensive items or items with low inventory holding cost or item with are not as perishable, the periodic inventory system uh, gets to be a much better system to use. Real life systems are a combination of um, reorder and periodic systems, uh, but we can design these systems so long as we know these concepts described here. Uh, in the videos that follow, we will talk about specific issues about inventory or how to make uh, reduce inventory, how to optimize inventory, and uh, keep continuing your lessons. Stay with me.